Welcome back, Sunrise. And now it's time to talk money. We've, talk, we've spoken food, we've spoken security. Let's talk more money. We'll start with money, right, Papa? No, we're talking more money. Oh, but just before we get into Big that, money. a mail <laughs> came in here from Mickey B. I'm sorry your mail came in late, so we're not able to read it before that panel wound out. Saying um, there's a lot of data showing animal milk is not good for human consumption, the cow milk for cows, hence the rising soya and alternative milk. What's it? Don't worry, we'll get the message across to the panel and they will, we'll give them your email. They'll mail you with the answer to that question. Mickey B, sorry your mail came late. Okay, back to Branch International. It's a bank in your pocket, so they say. There for you all the time. So Branch uses technology to dramatically reduce the cost of delivering financial services in emerging markets. It makes it easy for people in Nigeria to access loans anytime, anywhere. Uh, I don't know what, all the other details. But we have someone here, the General Manager of Branch International, Nigeria and West Africa, Maria Rotilu, is in the studio and she'll tell us more about us. Hello, Maria. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So when we, I mean, growing up, what we hear, branch, we hear it's a branch of something. <laughs> of, of, of a bank. Yeah, so of this one, yeah. this, this one, like, what exactly, what's branch? Yeah, I think the name is kind of like a spin-off on the fact that what branch means is a physical branch, um, but this is a digital branch on your phone. So you don't have to go anywhere to ah, the bank. So, so the so branch is with you. Exactly. You're carrying ah. it wherever you go. You don't have to visit anywhere. Yeah, okay. so that's the logic. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So what tell us about the phone. Okay, so branch essentially is a financial services app. Um, the way we think about it is banking shouldn't be a place you have to visit. Like a bank shouldn't be a place you have to visit to, you know, do banking. It should be a thing you do. Um, and I think you can do in this era of you know, mobile phones and data and the digital world, you shouldn't have to visit a place to do banking. You should be able to do it on your phone. So that's the logic. So the, the app essentially delivers financial services through your mobile device. Um, and as you, know, you mentioned earlier, we do offer loans to start. So essentially, users can just with their phone, no physical meeting, no collateral, no go and bring your, you know, um, Garant or whatever, you get a loan in minutes on your mobile device. That is and getting very interesting. <laughs> you need to tell us more about that. Yeah, so it's so it's, all I need to have is just an app on my phone. Exactly. And then I do what? And then you apply. Um, you download the app on Google Play Store, and you give us four information: your name, mm -hmm. your date of birth, your BVN, and your account number. You want us to, to deposit the funds. And in minutes, you actually get the loan. People find it very surprising, but Seriously. it's actually a real to this, There must no, be a no, ceiling no. to this loan. <laughs> Seriously. There must be a ceiling. No, no. Oh, yes. So, okay. So, I guess it's really based on trust, really. We give out small amounts initially, and as you repay, we then... Small amounts, you. starting with... Um, the, the highest um, first-time amount is about 10,000. It can get up to 200,000. Mm. So, it's really based on trust. Mm. The more you repay the higher loan amounts you get, the lower interest rates you get. So that's exactly how it works. Okay, so what, at what rate do you start to do the interest rates? So the thing is, it depends. Um, because it's not a one-person um, thing, people who come in initially and take loans over time, they witness decreasing interest rates and increasing amounts. That's, it's a dynamic system, so it's not static. So depending on how many loans you've repaid, the real fundamental is, is trust. The fact that you've taken a loan, do you repay on time? If you don't repay on time, that affects that. Um, and when you do repay on time, do you continue to do so when you take additional loans? All of that factor into the interest rate. Mm. 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 How do you now determine to whom you're going to give loans? That's a good question. Um, the reason we're able to do this is because of a technology called artificial intelligence. Um, what it does is... <laughs> <laughs> it's you not Google very me, techy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> But it's essentially taking large chunks of data and chopping it up and using it to predict something. So think of it this way. When you go to a regular bank, they ask you, what do you do? Um, you know, what's your bank statement look like? Um, you know, who do you know in case you default? That type of thing. What they're trying to really find out is if you exist as a real person, they'll ask for identification. And if you have the willingness and ability to repay. Um, all of that in this digital world, we, we carry a lot of data with us on our telephones. So we can use proxy data, so data on your phone that gives us insights into those things that the traditional organizations would ask. So that's how we do it. So who are you? We check your BVN. We check that you have a bank account. Do you have a bank account? We check your bank account, that it's real and it exists. And then um, data on your phone, it sound, it, it, it's, it's almost like a digital fingerprint to who you are. We get a sense. And based on that, we give you an initial loan offer. So it's okay. 
if the data science says, you know, lend to this person, we give you this amount. Let's see how you do. Then you pay, you build character, and then we get to know you, and then we give you Do you also amounts. do um, something like credit checks? Um, so we do credit reporting. Um, if you do not make payments on your loan, because that can happen sometimes, um, we do reach out, try to understand why, and when it gets to a long period, we report you to a credit bureau. Like we gave loans to this person, they were not able to repay, so we have to report to the bureau. So why, when I said you do credit checks, the, some people have taken loans from other institutions, yes. like somewhat like mm -hmm. branch and yeah. all of that, mm -hmm. and they have issues. So yeah. do you check up on this person's credit history before you even go ahead? To yes, what they call we, credit, credit ratings. Credit ratings. Mm. So we do, we do so using proxy data on the smartphone. Like I said, the smartphone is a bank of information that we can kind of have access to and use as insight into who you are. So based on your smartphone information, we can get a sense of if you've um, taken other loans before and you've potentially defaulted, and that will feed into our eventual decision. Okay, so Have you had uh, people who defaulted before that you had to take to the credit bureau? Oh, of course. Like, it, it does happen. It's not the best case, but it's, it, it's the business. It does happen. Um, and, but before we do that, we do reach out. So we, we, we make calls. You know, we notice you've not paid your loan is everything okay you can pay partial amounts so that you don't get defaulted and after a while if that's still you, you know you're unable to pay it we then report to the credit bureau so the credit bureau we tell the credit bureau this person took this loan of this amount and they're unable to repay okay it, yeah. on a loan for say okay you have graduated to a point where you can take like two hundred thousand now okay. How much time do you, does one have to pay back? So that's a good question because the way the system works is, as you it's think of it this way, it's based on trust. The data science tells us, but then we give you something and say, we, let's watch your behavior. Um, when you get 200,000, for people who eventually get there, they have lower interest rates and longer tenures. So it's because we now have confidence, like full confidence in the fact that you're able to repay, shown by repayment history that is strong, you know, yeah. we're able to give you lower interest rates and longer time. So we have um, loans as high as um, 16 to 18 months for that amount, if you want, at a low interest rate. So, mm -hmm. but not everybody might want that. Okay, you've been operating in Nigeria for two years. Yes, that's correct. And recently you announced that you had given out about one million loans yes. in the country, totaling about nine billion. billion yes. about. Okay. Um, what do you think has accounted for such a high growth in that period? Um, I think there is a whole segment of users who have never, you know, been able to access loans at a traditional bank, and not so much the fault of the banks themselves. These are retail folks who have access to, who don't have access to bank branches, and even when they do, it's quite difficult for the banks. They don't have to, collateral. Exactly. You know, the yeah. banks need all this information, yeah. but we don't. So, like I mentioned earlier, the reason we're really able to do this is because of the technology called artificial intelligence. That has kind of cut out all the physical meetings, paper, that the banks are kind of used to. Um, so I think that's what accounts for the growth. It just shows that there's a huge gap. Um, in the in the country and in the industry that we are here to, to try to fill. Okay, so um, what does, what sets you apart from the other financial institutions that do what you say you do? That's a good question. I think one thing that really differentiates branch is the fact that we're very simple to use. So um, it doesn't really matter if you're you know over you know literate or overly literate or like super phone savvy. We ask for just four key information: your name your BVN, your phone number, and your bank account. But I must have a smartphone. Yes, you must have a smartphone. So that means you're discriminating? Not really. I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> you know why I wouldn't say that? So there, there are two things that I think, in terms of what the data projects, makes it easier. One, if you notice, the price of smartphones in the past five years to now is not the same. It's plummeting. We're getting to a world where the price of your feature phone, that's your regular you know, phone without internet, and the price of the lowest end of the smartphone are becoming the same we would see that people will begin to transition. But I do hear you that there's a huge segment of people without um, access to smartphones. Well, how do you deal with people who are concerned, secu concerned about security? I mean, you, you, you've said over some multiple times now that the mobile phone is a whole a huge load of data. Yes. So in other words, someone's, as we're moving, a person's kind of his or her history. Yeah. And there are those who are like, I don't like people telling me about right. to know where I am, yeah. what I do, and yeah. they can find out from my smartphone. So please, let me stick with the feature phone. Yeah. So how do you handle those kind of people? So two things. I think the first thing that we are very 
very particular about security. We use world-class security standards at the company across markets. We're in numerous markets, by the way. We're in India, Mexico, um, Tanzania, Kenya, and Nigeria. And our headquarters oh, are in San world. Francisco. Emerging markets, <laughs> I would say. Okay, emerging. <laughs> um, and then, additionally, we are very explicit about the data we collect. It's the business model. The reason we're able to deliver such services is because we cut out that physical interaction. And the only proxy for that is data. One thing that we know is a huge responsibility, and we take it very seriously, is being upfront about that. So in the process of signing up, there is a clear screen that says this is the data we want to collect, this is what we want to use it for, we need your explicit permission. And if you're not comfortable with it, you don't have to go forward. So we're very um, explicit about that. Do I give you my photo at any point in time? Actually, no. You don't even know what I look like? Yeah. I could be non-existent for all you know. We will validate your existence through um, data my, services. My BVN. Yes, yes. And other, and other services. So the thing about artificial intelligence is not one thing. It's not one thing. It's not just one data point. There's thousands of data points we check to establish that you are who you say you are, and we validate that through some third-party database. Okay, so so really I'm a bit yeah. un uneasy about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because if I default, how do you find me? So, ex again, remember, these are microloans between a certain amount to a certain amount, and mm -hmm. it is built on trust. Mm -hmm. If you do default on the early loans, these are small amounts. You, if you go off in that um, point, you've already shown us the kind of person you are. We will not give you a higher amount. Good. And we so will, I'm gone with the first lot. That's enough for me. And then we report you to a credit bureau. Now, with the credit bureau, many other organizations also actually do checks for the credit bureau. So you would not be able to have access to any other loans. Mm. Okay, now this. You win. <laughs> <laughs> There's this thing about uh, yeah, we do. We've heard in the last few months, yeah. uh, Facebook's been hacked. Yeah. Um, even WhatsApp. Yeah. At a point, it's been hacked, and we're told up. Yeah, got it. We're told yeah. to update and all that. So, the question now, and this ties to this mail from Michael Enibokan, who says um, this is data invasion and is not good for the society. When you download that app and it scoops up all your data. That means they are agents of Yahoo Yahoo. We'll put that aside. So he says, how will you protect data? You need the interest rate at the start. Okay. And then they want to know what the interest rate is from the beginning. Get go. Okay. So I will answer the first question. Like I mentioned earlier, we're very particular about data security. We use world-class standards across all our markets. And the second thing I would say is, um, with regards to data, there is a responsibility on both ends, both the organization and also the user. We are very explicit about the data we collect. We are explicit. We are legit. There are many others that might not be. So it's very important that even users themselves are very aware of what they're kind of getting into. And on the organization end, which is what we do very well, we kind of disclose. Like, this is what we need it for, and this is why we need it. Can you just tell us what kind of data you collect so, and what you need it? Okay, so I would give you a high level, because like I mentioned with artificial Fair intelligence, it's not, it's not one thing. But the type of data we collect is um, SMS logs, um, we collect things like GPS locations. Not what we're trying to find out is, do you, let, let me use one example, do you make enough calls that show that you have income? So that's the final data we are trying to get to. So we do collect over 3,000 data points. So when I say it's not one thing, it's not necessarily, we just look at the amount of calls you collect and say, oh, okay, you, you make calls, we give you a loan. So it's a, it's a lot of information that we analyze to be able to get that initial um, loan offer. So hmm. that app has access to my call log? Yes. What else do we have access to? Mm -hmm. It's really just information we need to make that. Like, again, I would go back and say that remember that what we are trying to do is offer banking services where you don't have to physically visit people. I'll give you a story. We have um, focus groups um, at our office where we invite users to come in and have conversations. And we had a conversation with a man who had a lady around him, and she came to meet him. She's a mother. She didn't have any money. And he said, I don't have money to give you, but I know this app. Download it and apply, see if they will give you. So she applied, she got 10,000 naira initially. And she took that 10,000 10, naira, bought um, flour, made chinchin, and sold it. Came to meet the guy that, ah, thank you very much. The guy said, I really did not do anything. I just introduced you to it. I think that is just the microcosm of the opportunities that are possible through access. She didn't, if she had gone to a traditional bank, 
she would not have had access to a loan. So that initial interest, that yes. interest, what's yes. the interest rate? So the interest rate varies, like I mentioned. So you have interest the rates between one. about 15 to over 21%. But what I would say is that this decreases over time. This is not static. This is something that as you take more loans, you get longer tenures and you get shorter interest rates. So give me a read. No, I Start don't. to end. I just said 15 to 21%. 15 to 21%. Yeah. That's, okay. that's, so that's how do I get the app? Um, all you need to do is go to the Google Play Store and download Branch. It's a three-dot logo, a line, and then two dots. It's blue circle. Um, you look for Branch, and you download the app. It's very easy, very quick. In five minutes, you Only Google, only Android user. No, yes, just um, Android. Um, and this is because, I mean, in Africa and developing nations, not everybody uses an iPhone. If you look at the prevalence of one over the other, you will see that it's skewed towards Google. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much, Maria Roti. Rotilu yes. is the general manager of Branch International in Nigeria and West Africa. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much and for having me. We wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sunrise will be back in a moment.